Water monkeys also feast on insects. They patrol close to the surface, scanning the branches for possible prey. During the wet season, water monkeys live in one world and hunt in another. Arowana have a brilliant strategy for reaping the rich insect rewards of the flooded river. Just as water monkeys benefit from this time of plenty, so do other fish. When the forest floods, strange sounds are heard. It's the sound of trees in fruit. These exploding nuts are from rubber trees, one of Amazonia's most famous. As they ripen under the heat of the glaring sun, their surface skins shrivel, releasing the nuts. Nuts are spread far and wide by floodwaters. Even when soaked in water for a long time, the nut's waterproof shell prevents rot and protects from predators. But the tambaki has found a way to crack this problem. The tambaki uses its funnel-shaped nostrils to help it find nuts that are its passion. Its powerful jaws and teeth are perfect nutcrackers. Nuts are rich in protein, fat, and minerals. They're excellent food if you can get them. Tambaki eat nuts from several kinds of trees. They are so dedicated to nutcracking that small fish accompany them to dine on the crumbs. Most trees produce fruits and nuts during the wet season, so tambaki do most of their feeding at this time. Later in the year, they must use other strategies to survive. Another dedicated fruit and nut eater lives high up in swamp forest trees. Wakari is one of the few monkeys in the world with teeth and jaws strong enough to crack nuts and seeds. They form most of its diet. In Amazonia, a fish and a monkey have both become specialized to gain the riches of the nut harvest. Another mammal living in the flooded forest is the three-toed sloth. Sloths devour the leaves of cecropia trees. The tree is protected by stinging ants, but they're no deterrent to thick-furred sloths. The leaves offer little nourishment, so sloths must spend most of their time eating and use as little energy as possible, apart from holding on, as this baby is doing. Sloths are not good walkers, and they rarely move from their home trees. But when a sloth does need to move, it much prefers to swim.
during the flood, the waters are safe. There are no enemies. This is the best time to move from tree to tree to seek new food, or maybe to strike out in search of a mate. It has been two months since the waters began to rise and the forest trees became submerged. They will remain submerged for months to come. Normally, trees would die after just a few weeks of flooding because their roots cannot receive oxygen. But the roots of these Amazonian trees can survive being submerged for much longer due to a special adaptation. When their roots become waterlogged, a membrane forms on the outside of the root. But inside, there is partial cell death, and that creates air spaces. These spaces act as air holes to transfer oxygen and remove toxins. This strategy allows the trees to succeed in two very different worlds. Amazingly, there is greater diversity of trees where the forests are submerged than anywhere else in Amazonia. The coming of the floods and submerging of the forests is the trigger for another important event. It's the time when many fish begin breeding. This Discus fish uses its narrow body to penetrate deep within the foliage to lay eggs where enemies won't find them. It constantly watches over the precious brood for two days until hatching. Of all tropical fish, discus are among the most beautiful and highly prized because of their rich colors and patterns. But during spawning, their bodies lose the rich pattern and become darker as they prepare to give their offspring a precious gift. A day after they hatch, the fries start swimming. They keep very close to mother and father. So close, some appear to be mouthing the bodies of their parents. In fact, the first meal for young discus is a mucus secretion from the skin of their parents called discus milk. This special meal gives the young a great start in life. At breeding time, some fish go to extraordinary efforts to find a safe place to lay their eggs. Close by overhanging leaves, pairs of Capella arnoldi gather. These tiny fish have a huge challenge ahead of them. The male has the long tail. The female is ready to spawn, the eggs visible through her skin. The pair move together near the surface, sometimes pausing, sometimes darting back and forth with urgency. What is about to happen is a most remarkable spawning achievement. <laughs> 